well guys, it's 8.30 in the morning, and it's a day off, I'm finally gonna do off after 8 days, yes! But, I need to get down to business. I'm gonna get to the Belarusian Embassy before 12.30 today, to pick up my passport. Cause I'm going to Belarus next week, that's right, going to Belarus. So I'm, I've been have given it to me. I had to email them some travel insurance documents because I bought travel insurance. I didn't send them the whole thing at the embassy last week. I just gave them a page that said, "You bought two pounds fifty of travel insurance. It's supposed to be like two hundred fifty thousand dollars in medical insurance." So it's a bit it crazy. Like you need to buy medical insurance. I mean, let's just say, if I went to Serbia and I got injured and stuff, I'd just go back to Croatia and get treatment as an EU citizen until Brexit. <laughs> yes. Let's put a call today, Subway. Let's get breakfast. Bingo. It's getting 10 o'clock right now. I'm gonna go cut through Hyde Park to get to where the Royal Albert Hall is. And then past the Royal Albert Hall is the Belarusian Embassy. The important thing is, I'm gonna get there before it closes at 12.30. Because otherwise, if I don't get there, which I will, I'd have to wait until Monday. And I'm fairly busy with work, Monday afternoon. Well, here it is, got my ticket, got my passport today at the Embassy of Belarus, in London, the Consul visa section. The funny thing is, the Embassy is upstairs. Uh, I don't get to go into that part, but the Consul visa section is downstairs in the basement. So it's... I got my British passport back and some tourist information. And I got my visa, so I'm all set for Minsk. You know, I was kind of a bit worried. I thought, oh, if it's going to be rejected, I have to go to a different country because I've already been to Lithuania. But um, when you walk in London, you notice the embassies, and it gives you ideas. I mean, look, look they've got like, I've never been in the Philippines. There's Mongolia, so I've been to, and Azerbaijan, so I've been to, and I'm going to Belarus on Tuesday. That's about it. So, uh, all I gotta do now is head on to Putney. And right now I'm in Hammersmith, got a minute left. I get my number 72 bus to take me down to Putney Vale Cemetery. Um, every time I go to Putney Vale Cemetery, I always seem to not find the bus that goes back to London Central. I always end up like walking about a mile to find it. So, hopefully, this won't happen to Putney right now at lunchtime, and yet, yet again, I always tend to get dropped off in this area. I mean, last time I got dropped off at the front gate, but uh, I, that's what Google Maps is telling me. Google Maps told me to take the 72, drops you off here, you just go underneath this walkway, and then you're at the cemetery. So. But first, I need to stop into Asda to get some flowers for Sandy. Asda, your one-stop shop to buy flowers for the cemetery. It's been Asda, so three pounds, got myself a bunch of uh, roses and carnations. Look good, and they'll last for a couple of weeks. I mean, last time I went to Sandy's grave, I left her a pot plant with some like red flowers. So I reckon they're probably long gone by now, they've been thrown out. See, as I said in my last video, when I came here in October, Sandy Denny is the reason why I live in the United Kingdom. She's the reason why I live in Europe, and she's the reason why one day I'll I'll move to Sweden. Because like, 
I have moved so I'd ever go back to Australia. I mean, I'll go back and see with my parents and whatnot, but I don't want to live in Australia ever again. I hate that country. When I was walking the cemetery last October, I had a sixth sense. I had a vibe of my friends, Marlene and Erwin. And they were like grandparents to me when growing up in Sydney. And I saw them a lot more than my actual grandmother, because I didn't get to meet her until I was 27, 26. And so, this made me call my mom, because I hadn't spoken to my mom on the phone in like three months. And so, Sandy Danny Spirit kind of inspires me to call my mom every week or so. The funny thing is, I get free calls to numbers outside of Britain, but then I never have credit to call anybody in this country. So, here I am, for the third time in my life, at the grave of Sandy Denny. The flowers I left in October, right here, they've all wilted away. So, it's time to replace these with fresh ones, and I'm very thankful that somebody has left a vase here, so I'm going to do the honour by putting in my flowers. Like, actually, I should move it a bit to the left. Yeah, that makes better, yeah. Hey Sandy, it's been nine months since I moved to London. And no mind since I discovered your music. I thank you dearly for giving me the power to stay in this country. Every time I visit Cambridge to see my cousin Leslie Ann, we always talk about your music. We always talk about Fairpoint Convention. And we always wish that you were a lot more better than Olivia and John or Colin Minogue or all the garbage of music that comes out today. We wish you're still alive today, rocking out. You're the same age as my mother. May you live on and continue to inspire other musicians, including people born after you left us. Amen. person to my beliefs. I couldn't help but leave a single rose for, for David, Edna and Neil, the Denny family. So I was just done visiting Sandy Denny's grave. I should make an effort to visit this place once a month, but because it's got no like tube stations nearby, unlike Golders Green, I don't always get to go out there that often. I mean, Golders Green, I've got like Mark Boland, Keith Moon, Paul Kossif, and John Collins' dad, Joe Collins. But I'm um, here, I'm just coming here for Sandy Danny, and if I'm interested, I'll visit Howard Carter's grave. Now, look who it is, it's a squirrel. I'm trying to find some nuts, or where did he last bury his nuts? Can't you unless you got food? Mm. 
Nah, selesai setting. Come on, come on, fella.